Hello and welcome to this video about null binding, which is part of the Costube Skill Swap series. In the spirit of starting a new year, the idea is to meet up with someone and learn a new skill. To that end, I am joined by the delightful Faye Sterling. She will be teaching me null binding, the video you're watching right now, and in turn, I'll be helping her to learn cable knitting, and you'll be able to watch that video over on her channel. I'll include links to her YouTube channel, Faye Sterling, and Instagram, Sterling Seamstress, in the description. Before we jump back to making the mitten, let's talk a little bit about null binding. So firstly, welcome Faye. Hello. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> so Faye, I was hoping you could tell me what exactly is null binding? So null binding is a form of textile production currently really associated in the minds of people with the Vikings, but it's basically an early form of single needing, uh, needle knitting that's usually done with a needle or null made out of horn or bone. It, it's got a super interesting past because while it's mainly associated with Scandinavia, uh, finds of it have been found throughout China, Peru, Egypt, and is currently still practiced among the Pemon people and Iranians or Iranians, as well as the Scandinavians, mainly in Finland. And it's been classified as an endangered craft by Heritage Crafts UK. <laughs> so then my next question is, what is it used for? It's used for a lot of things. Uh, I'm on a Facebook group of null binders who have been recently making a bunch of uh, sweaters. Mm -hmm. but. Uh, historically, we see a whole lot of mittens and socks, and in Iran, they're actually used to make slippers. And so they'll have like a, a leather base or a rubber base, but the whole part, top part of it will be null bands. Uh, and then next question as far as the history background of null binding is, how long has it been around? Our earliest finds of null binding have been found around 6,500 before Common Era, mm -hmm. and it was found in Israel. <laughs> I was hoping you could talk to me and potentially show me some different stitch types. If you've maybe got any project, different projects that have some samples. I do. Sure. I did a couple of swatches of the main two that I use. Uh, this is the York Stitch. It's very simple because you're just looping through the previous stitch with mm -hmm. no twisting involved and so it creates itself a very twisted textile mm. but it's quite stretchy as a result and then we have oslo which is what your mitten is made with yep and it's you go through your thumb loop as well as the loop behind and you twist as it goes to create this sort of herringbone shape on the textile itself. And then I'm going to start sharing my screen because I have a couple of projects pulled up on that. <laughs> do, please do. All right, uh, here's my first one, which is done in all slow stitch. I have like, I, I can basically show my whole reenactment kit through null binding photos as well. <laughs> This is with acrylic yarn and it's with my first null binding needle, which is a monstrous six inches in length. <laughs> it was very weird to work with at first, but you can see it's still got the whole chevron or herringbone shape, even with the acrylic yarn. And you just see the tufts of where I had to knot the yarn itself instead of felting. Yeah. And we have the mittens that I made with, uh, this is out of, I believe Mammon, no, yeah, Mammon Stitch, which is a variant of Oslo, which involves going through more of the loops behind your thumb. So it gives a denser fabric textile. It, it's a much denser textile. 
And this was actually not done with a traditional null. I used a safety pin. <laughs> <laughs> and then here is another Mammon uh, stitch. This one is worked with uh, wool as well as a fluffy acrylic yarn I had. <laughs> so I, I really like playing with different colors in my null binding projects. And you can especially see it in the next one, which is dark gray and dark purple in a spiral as it goes up from the toe. Mm. And this is once again done in Mammon, although after wearing it for a while, I decided it was a little too toasty. Because too toasty. I live in Texas. <laughs> 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 so it was a little warm, uh, warm for me and it felt to, to a very thick textile on the bottom. So mm. Oslo is better for socks. <laughs> And then here's one of my most recent ones that I did for a trade with, I ended up getting some tent stakes for this. It was mom and stitch and um, around the edge, I used two strands of yarn and just made that whole little fancy thing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Wonderful. Thank you very much for sharing that. I, I, I enjoy the projects. Yeah. <laughs> it's really nice to see the different shapes, the different textures that you can get. Um, all from a little needle and some yarn. Yeah. <laughs> uh, could you please give us a closer look at your needles and talk about that a little bit? So this is the all I use most of the time because I use fairly thin wool when I'm working. And so it's small and thin, and it's made out of wood and hand carved by a local from the SCA. And here's a bit of a longer one that I tend to use on projects with thicker wool. It's made out of horn, and you can see it's the same general shape, although the taper is much longer on this one. Mm -hmm. So what's the benefit of having that longer taper? I can understand the bigger hole for the thicker yarn, but what's the benefit of the longer taper? Uh, sometimes it can be a little bit fiddly when you're working with a fairly small needle. And so it's nice if, say, you have hand issues to work with something that's a bit easier to hold on to. So I've now made this mitten, so I know <laughs> that now binding stitches are basically little knots, yes. which is very different to knitting and crochet. It's so fun to show knitters and crocheters this because you can just you do can this. cut it, yeah, <laughs> and it just stays. Yeah, and, and it's see. very cool. <laughs> it's, and you can see how the looping actually affects the textile and why it's mainly worked in the round because mm. in the flat it's just so twisty. Yeah. <laughs> It is so much worse with your stitch. <laughs> because I really cute. <laughs> Just a little helix. <laughs> but it won't come undone. That is really cool. <laughs> and now we have that context. Let's go back to the start of making my mitten. So we've got to, we start off by breaking the thread, that I believe. Arm. So that we're just a short little length. So that sort of amount? Yep. You can I use the <laughs> And then you thread your needle so you have a short tail and a long tail. <laughs> short tail, long tail. We're going to ignore the short tail and just focus on the long tail. Hold, right. Lay the long tail with your hands and you can just sort of grasp it and start wrapping the tail over your thumb. And we're doing Oslo, so just two will do. Like that? 
and then you want to pinch where those at the back of your thumb and to lay the rest of the tail over your thumb. This way? Yep. Now to make our first stitch, we push the bottom off of your thumb and that's where we're going to be working through. And keep the other loop on your thumb. Like that. And from there, between your thumb and the loop of yarn, you go through and twist and then go under the thumb loop and push through. And tighten. Yay! And then once again, we push off that old loop that we just went through and keep the new one on the thumb. And so just to double check, when I'm coming on the thumb, am I adding it closer to the knuckle or closer to the nail? Compared closer to the knuckle. The knuckle? Yes. Yeah. So we push off the one that's at the end. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then, and then that's the one I may have messed up that first bit, but that's okay. So under? No. Under there? Under there, and then turn and underneath the thumb loop. And tighten. Okay. And then push off. <laughs> Under, under. And tighten. Is that what it's meant to be looking like? That doesn't look right. It should kind of loop, look like a, a mess of loops at the back until you pull on the end a little bit, and that way it will sort of align itself into the stitches. Hmm. Is that, that doesn't, is that it? I don't think that's quite right. <laughs> this is why we just kind of keep going because remember we can cut off the mistake. <laughs> uh, yes. Okay, so I've got two things. The more recent one, should be nearer than the knuckle. The fact that you're working with the right loop by just pulling on the long end, the one that's attached to your thumb, and seeing which one tightens. Aha, it's starting to be, look a little more loopy and chainy. Yes. So, can you please talk me through the process of joining on a new bit of yarn? So, we've got two pieces of yarn. We want to sort of tuft out the already kind of fuzzy ends just to lose a little bit of volume. And then split them vaguely in half. It doesn't need to be perfect, but it helps. So you can see better, I'm actually going to use my copy of the camera <laughs> as a background. And so you split them in half and overlap them. And I like to sort of press them down without the wet fingers just to get it started. Then we wet our fingers. And roll them between. And there we go. We've got one continuous piece of yarn. Hey. Yay, 
take shit away? Yeah. <laughs> and are you working on any other nail binding projects for yourself at the moment? Uh, presently, I'm focused on the more textile parts of my kit. Uh-huh. And so I haven't worked on any new socks lately, but those are next on my list. I've got <laughs> some yarn that I'm spinning up for both and some copper gate socks which were made up out of thread that's about as thick as sewing thread. Oh, wow. Yeah. That, I would imagine that's going to take you a little while. Have you worked with that thinner, thinner yarn before? Not yet. I've done <laughs> some practice with uh, some just mildly thicker yarn. Yep. And I know it's going to be slow going, but... It will look really nice once when it's yeah. done. Aha. Beautiful. <laughs> All neat and like it's done by someone experienced at this. Crazy. <laughs> I've only been doing this for two years. <laughs> and how's your chain going on the length? Um, um, it's probably worth, oh, uh, yep, ready to join. <laughs> Alright. Yes, and we want to make sure that it's straight, so I kind of run my fingers along until I get to the end. Okay, yep, I think I'm holding that straight. And I will usually hold the ends between my middle and my thumb. So that when you go to grab a stitch, it's already right there. Okay, so grabbing a stitch, or push, pushing that end one off, grabbing a stitch. And then, the end one. And back. And then you go to the next stitch. Push it off. Under, so through the stitch, under the pushed off end one, and back. Yep. Under a stitch, through the pushed off end one, and back. Okay, it's starting to be joined up. Yeah. Oh, I may have twisted it, uh, but that's okay, because now is probably a good time to switch. <laughs> so this one, which I've still got enough of a tail on there at the moment, I think. This is a cuff that can just fit over my wrist. And for a bit, I think we're going to do increasing first, just yep. like you're wearing that little cuff. <laughs> So we'll do your first step stitch normally. Stitch normally. So through the thing, through the back one and around. And then on the next stitch, do that normally as well. But then when you go to do your next one, go through that same loop that you just went through again. Oh, okay. I think I might need to see that. Okay. So I just did one stitch. Yep. Where I'm attached to this loop right here. I put my needle through there again and stitch. Ah, so through the same one that we've been through. Yes. That makes sense. And so do we go through each stitch twice? It all depends on how much you want to increase. I'd say for a very gentle flare, you could do every three stitches have an increase. Mm -hmm. And what about for a mitten? What would you recommend? Is that a gentle flare situation? Uh, For like the cuff of a mitten, I'd say go with a gentle flare. 
but for increasing out to the, to the thumb, you only want to have a couple stitches where you increase per round. So this is going to be a double. Mm -hmm. There's the first time going through it. And off. And the second time going through it. Cool. So if increasing is putting two stitches into one stitch, I'm guessing decreasing is taking two stitches in one go. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Very straightforward. <laughs> And if you ever worry about what increase you're on, if you set things down or anything, you can uh, stick different colored wool in through the fabric at which stitches that you need to double up on. Mm -hmm. Or just <laughs> use a stitch marker like a normal knitter. <laughs> <laughs> I always lose my stitch markers, so I just use yarn. <laughs> Okay, I think I've gone all the way around once. All right. And you can just see how it's just slightly starting to flare out towards that end that you just did. Yeah, just a little yeah. bit of flare. Mm -hmm. Cool. Um, I think I've got the idea now for increasing and decreasing in rates. Uh, mission wise, is there a specific pattern I should follow, or do you just do it? Would you uh, hand and see how it feels? Goosey goosey with, by just sort of slipping it on and seeing how it looks and feels. But I will also send you Karen Bjorn's uh, null binding mitten along, along from the wrist up because mm. she has wonderful instructions. And I recommend anyone who wants to learn null binding to check her out as well. <laughs> so I have continued on a couple more loops of expanding at every third stitch. I have got this about as wide as I want it to be. It's really quite big. I think it's good. It's sort of fitting around the hand. I'm now going to do one or two rows just with no more increases just to get up a bit to get to the bottom of the thumb. So here is one and a half more rows of just increasing as is and I want to get at this point I'm going to do is where I'm gonna take the thumb off well not take a thumb off separate off that section for the thumb and keep going around here so let's measure that out So now I have done just a few across there. So now we're going to join this little extra section in over there. that it had those extra ones going over and we've joined in a few again so we've got that hole there for the thumb which is fine that's ready to go and we're just going to continue up into the top of the mitt let's try it on here and see how we're going so that is a bit loose isn't it <laughs> it's all a bit loose <laughs> so i'm going to continue on to that marker 
just straight and then I'm going to start decreasing. So get rid of this marker, now we know where we are. And I'm going to pick up two stitches to go into the next one. So basically waltzing, two, one, one, two, one, 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 okay, and then two, so that's starting to come in, that's good. I think we're now ready to start curving in. That sort of angle that we got, the 3 to 1 was good, so we might just do that at the top and see how we go for the next round. Getting so close. Yeah, perhaps put two more and then just sew it up. Yep, looks like we've got a nice cover there. We'll just work it, whip that through and work it down somehow. Not bad for a first attempt. Time for the thumb. So I've decided I'm going to start here and work my way around. Starting with a clove hitch on my thumb, I push one of them off. Start the tapering. Yeah. Oh, cool. Mitten. It's very open at this gauge, but as a technical exercise, <laughs> this was very interesting. So this is my mitten that I have made under your tutelage. Thank you very much. It looks good, like <laughs> for a first project, like. <laughs> Oh, it was not this pretty. <laughs> it functions as a mitten. I can get it on. Yeah. Hello. Yeah. <laughs> I'm a puppet. And, and the fun little sneaky part about null binding is that you can use your phone with it because you can sort of like get your fingertip through one of the loops. And... Oh, yeah. <laughs> I can. <laughs> And so you can use your phone without taking your mitten off. <laughs> Pro tip. <laughs> yeah, so there's increases and then decreases. Like, I, I feel I've got a nice little sampler here of the things I can do with a basic <laughs> Oslo stitch. So this mitten is this, at the stage where I have constructed it. Uh, what would be the next steps? Is it ready to use? You could actually, if you want, this is typically an optional step, but you could do some blocking on it just so that the stitches remain more even looking. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and it just brings out the texture of the products even more. I tend not to do any blocking, but I know other people do. And so I figured we could look over that. 
Uh, so when you were blocking, what, what would you be trying to do? So I've mainly blocked um, well, knit, knitting when it's lacy and you've really got to try and stretch it out to the right shape. So are you trying to pull this as much as possible when you're blocking or what's the, the, um, the mindset for the blocking process? So the mindset typically is to make everything look even. So say if you think that your finger taper is a little too much, you can sort of stretch that out a little bit to make it more like the standard oval shape for a finger area on a mitten. <laughs> I'm not sure what that's called, but <laughs> it, it's very much a you do what you think you ought to do and a whole lot of null binders are uh, very loosey-goosey like I am. It's <laughs> <laughs> so I have one mitten here, uh, which is good for one hand. But you I guess my, the other. <laughs> I don't think I'd quite fit two hands in together. <laughs> so I guess my, my next task is to make the other mitten. Yes. <laughs> but and we are currently in summer here in the Southern Hemisphere. Winter's not till June, so I, I have plenty of time. And it's all about, you know, just making sure that you have it when it's time to be told. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so Thank you very much for this costume skill swap and teaching me the basics of nail binding. Thank you so much for helping me get my brain around cabling. <laughs> how much this helps. <laughs> I really enjoyed learning a new skill. I am really happy with my meta. Once I was in the rhythm, it went fairly quickly and you have a lot of control over how you shape it. Oslo stitch is quite open gauge, and perhaps a different stitch would be better for mittens, but it looks cool. Perhaps my least favourite part of the process was constantly having to break off fairly short lengths of yarn, and then rejoin them together with the felting. That just wasn't something I found fun. So thank you very much once again to Faye for taking the time to teach me the basics of nullbind. Please comment below if nail binding is something that you've tried or want to try. I'd love to hear what you've made or what you plan to make. And I'd encourage everyone watching to have a look at the other Costube Skillswap videos. I'll post the link to the playlist in the description. Thank you for watching. Goodbye. <laughs>